For Ireland, the two problems flowing from Brexit are economic and security. The proposed answer was the backstop. To understand the backstop, you have to understand what came before. And this means going back almost 100 years to 1921. Ireland was partitioned, and between the 1920s and the mid-1990s, um, we faced a pretty hard border involving uh, lots of checkpoints and infrastructure. This was number one, because Ireland and Northern Ireland were two distinct economic zones. And two, to try and mitigate terrorist groups crossing the border, especially during the violence known as the Troubles from the late 60s onwards. But in the 90s, things changed for Ireland and the United Kingdom. In 1993, when the two countries became members of the single European market, they both essentially became a single economic zone to all intents and purposes. That meant there was no need to check goods uh, flowing from one side to the other. Then, in 1998, we had the Good Friday Agreement. That was essentially a peace deal in Northern Ireland, which really drew a line under a lot of violence that was happening in the province at the time. So therefore, the need to uh, have a border checkpoint for security reasons lessened. So all told, by around 2000 or so, um, the border had largely melted away and had become an invisible frontier between the two countries. The fact that there was no border between the two countries meant trade was much easier, uh, so goods flowed freely back and forth and also it meant that people could live in one jurisdiction and then travel to the other jurisdiction so essentially uh, there was you know no checkpoints it made crossing back and forth incredibly simple but in 2016 Britain voted to leave the EU and the single market by definition once uh, the UK leaves the EU and leaves a single economic market uh, in theory, at least, that means there has to be a border uh, placed back on the frontier of Ireland um, because essentially the two, the two jurisdictions are no longer in the same economic zone. So there needs to be checks on goods going from north to south and south to north, at least in theory, um, which would create you know, barriers for business, for example. Then there's the potential security issue. If checkpoints are needed, this could provoke violence again. So how do you address this? Well, the EU and Ireland suggested the backstop. The backstop is a plan or proposal that means that uh, that originally meant that Northern Ireland would keep the same rules as the EU. Ireland and the EU maintain that it's so important because without the backstop and without checkpoints we placed along the border, Northern Ireland could become a, a, a backdoor for substandard goods to come in to the EU. But this is where things become more complex. The DUP, a Northern Irish party, which wants Northern Ireland to be treated exactly as the rest of the UK, said this was unacceptable. And they had leverage because the DUP is how the Conservative Party keeps its governing majority in the UK Parliament. So the DUP objected to Northern Ireland only backstop because they said it was unfair that Northern Ireland be treated from the rest of the UK. Theresa May realised that she could not push the backstop through against the wishes of the DUP, therefore she changed the nature of the backstop. Um, as opposed to being a Northern Ireland only backstop, she made it into a UK wide backstop. That meant that the entire territory of the UK would essentially obey the same rules as the EU. Theresa May tried to make the backstop UK wide to appease the DUP. If they were receiving the same treatment as the rest of the UK, then there, in theory, ought not to be a problem. That proposal was uh, voted down three times by the House of Parliament on the grounds that Brexiteers would argue what's the point of leaving the EU if we're going to have to maintain the same rules as the EU. Ultimately, this is what cost Theresa May her premiership. Enter Boris Johnson, who said he would scrap the backstop completely, winning him support from Brexiteers and his party, and eventually helping him to become Prime Minister. But with Boris Johnson comes a higher risk of no deal. Under Theresa May, Irish government were fairly confident that there would not be a no deal Brexit. With Boris Johnson, the calculation has changed very much, and the chances of a no deal Brexit have risen dramatically, I would say. So there's three potential outcomes as officials in Dublin see uh, emerging over the next sort of three months or so. The first possibility is that uh, Boris Johnson calls an election, wins majority, and no longer has to rely on a, uh, the DUP for support. Therefore, Boris Johnson could return to the original backstop. The second scenario is that Brexit is delayed indefinitely. There's a second referendum or an election which leads to a change in government and Brexit never happens. The third 
outcome is a potential no deal Brexit. No deal means the UK crashes out of the EU without a transition period and immediately trades as a third party country. So in a worst case scenario, you would see tariffs applied to Irish goods being exported to the UK, plus the potential for checks being placed in or around the border. Although as yet, there's no certainty around that. At least one Irish business organization has called the prospect of no deal Brexit as a catastrophe. But as yet, there is no pressure on the government to drop the backstop, but people are becoming more and more worried about what may happen in a no deal scenario.